Good afternoon, Matanistas. I've moved on and I'm now in Seville. Behind me, you can see the Queen Elizabeth Bridge, I think that's what it means, Punta de Reina Isabel, which divides the two halves of the city between the river Guadalquivir. On the other half of the city, we have the main city, cathedral, the Alcazar and everything. And on the side of the city I am, it's a place more frequented by locals called Triana. Both areas of the city are really good for food. In fact, Seville is the best place in Spain for tapas, in my opinion. So today, we're going to have a little tapas tour in the more traditional part of the city, Triana. So this city is awash with little bars, holes in the wall, all sorts of places where you can get some tasty treats. Now I can't possibly cover all of them, but I've done a bit of a recce, and I'm gonna bring you a sample of some of the places I think serve good tapas. And of course in the summer, this city is as hot as it gets in Spain. Not the worst I've seen, but it's getting close to 40 degrees today. Anyway, such mere peccadilloes will not put off seasoned gastronauts like ourselves, will it? So let's get cracking on with it. I'm looking forward to this. It's been a while since I've been in this part of the city. So I'm going to start in probably one of the most famous places in Triana, Los Golondrinas. They have two places. They have their original very tight packed area, which has a lower capacity at the moment. So I have difficulty finding the seat, but thankfully they have another place just around the corner, which is a little more spacious, more seating, but the same great tapas and the same great beverages. Anyway, enough waffle from me. Food and drink has arrived. That is the important thing. And we have a glass of manzanilla sherry. Very popular in this part of the world. And probably the second driest, I think, after Fino. Now, I'm not an expert on sherries, so forgive me if I'm slightly out with my description, but it's very cold. It's so chilled, it's refreshing. I don't like sherry in the UK because of course, in the UK, we always serve it as everything at room temperature, no matter how hot the room. Anyway, enough of the rant. Down. And I've just gone for a simple tapper of squid in a light olive oil and garlic fry with a little bit of salad on the side. Perfect, in my opinion, with sherry. When I have fried tappers, I do like a bit of sherry with it. Now, if you'd heard me saying this five years ago you'd have thought I'd be ill or something because I used to not drink sherry but coming here it's been a revelation and as usual Matanistas your little close-up and this isn't a typical Andalusian tapa it's just something you can get all over Spain but we're not far from the sea not that it matters with modern refrigeration it's still pretty fresh pretty soft pretty tender as good a piece of squid as you can get all for the princely sum of two euros eighty. Okay, for the round two, I'm going to try a place that I like the look of. Um, it didn't have that many reviews that I'd read. That doesn't mean there aren't, of course, but I just like the look of the place. So I'm going to see if I can enjoy a nice tapa here. And they claim they have a good selection of wine. That's good enough for me, I think. And let's face it, if I'm wrong, we haven't broken the bank. But I am usually right when I see somewhere I like. Right, back to the important business of eating and drinking. Now, I had intended to just order one thing in each place and try each thing with a glass, but I saw something in addition to the cob dish that I was interested in that I couldn't refuse. So I've gone for two little tapas here, and I've gone for beetroot salmorejo. Normally it's tomato, but uh, I don't know whether this is just beetroot. It's probably both, but I've never had it before, a cold tomato and beetroot soup, so I had to try it. Oh, I forgot to give you a little close-up on the spoon. That's really rather splendid, actually. 
the um, tanginess of the beetroot does add something. If I had to choose one, if I could have them every day, I'd go for the tomato. But as a change, this is nice, and it is beetroot and tomato. But to wash this down, I've gone for something I rarely have in Spain, a rosé, but salted cod and rosé mm, does it for me, and it goes well with the soup as well. Quite dry, not quite like the very pale, really dry rosés you get in the Provence area of uh, France. More like the real southwestern French rosés, which are, again, something that are underappreciated, in my opinion. Of course, Salmorejo, if you remember, is the thicker of the two soups from Cordoba, obviously in Andalusia as well. Gazpacho is the more liquidy version. This is lovely, and if you like cold soups, you should really come here because it is something different. Now, onto the dish I'd actually come here for cod. Bacalao, salt cod, again popular all over Spain, so obviously they'll have it here in Andalusia, served with peppers. I think it's been roasted and it has some white sauce, I'm not sure what it is. It's like a mayonnaise with paprika generously sprinkled on top of it. So let's pan down and give it a try. So here we are, the close-up as usual, and uh, I don't really have to worry about the freshness because it's been preserved in salt, reconstituted in water. Mm, that is tasty. And the veg, let's have a little... I so much prefer med veg to root veg to the point well, I just don't eat root veg unless there's nothing else available. Mm. The olive oil and the paprika, you see it particularly in Galicia, but all over Spain. An unbeatable combination. And that, Matanistas, deserves a quick slurp. Mm. And that is a good match. The rosé and salt cod I really like together. It went well with the soup, but to be honest, I got it because I knew I was having the cod. Anyway, I'll finish off that dish and we'll move on to the next place. So, Matanistas, this is round three. Serviceria Albrea de Albahaca. It's on the main pedestrianised street in the centre of Triana. Unlike most places here in Seville where it's so hot, every so often they pump cold vapour out of the canopies just to cool the customers down. And again, I come here for something else, but I ended up ordering something completely different because I went with the waiter's suggestion. So, let me explain what we've got, and it might be difficult for me to explain. We have tortilla de camarones, or tortillita de camarones, very much an Andalusian speciality, if I remember correctly. And down here we have something very unusual, I've never had it before, huevos de chocos. Now, I think they're the nidamental glands, whatever they are, of the cuttlefish. I don't know what they are. Some internet sites seem to suggest that it basically cuttlefish testicles well I'm always game for whatever it is let's try it and see and the waiter strongly recommended beer with this so I've gone for a can now light refreshing and of course here if you want to order a beer always order a small one because if you order a pint or half a litre the chances are in the heat unless you drink it quickly that it'll go warm now this was on today's specials, let's see if it is special. I'm not an expert by the way on pairing beer with food, so I've gone with their advice. Not sure what it is to be honest, but it's reasonable, it tastes pretty fishy. Probably a nice beer snack, I wouldn't say I'd go out of my way to have this, but you know, if I see a food I've never had before, unless it's something to do with celery, I'll always try it. Now for the tortilla de camarone. I've had this before. I'm quite liking it. It's quite pleasant. It is very much a sort of beer snack. Probably something I should have had at the start of the meal rather than halfway through it, but uh, never mind. And I can see why beer goes well with this. Anyway, I'll deal with these and then we'll move on for round four. So folks, stop number four. Now this tour is going to be divided into two parts, the before and after, as in lunch and dinner, because I don't want to go to eight or nine places in one go, be wellied at half four and be absolutely stuffed and ruined the whole day. So this will be the last stop before we go to dinner, doing the same sort of thing. So as I said folks, one more for the afternoon, 
and we are going to try Paco de España with this lovely vapour coming out but it's getting so hot I might go indoors. So finishing off here with some croquettes. Now croquettes are something you get all over Spain. They're very popular and you can have all sorts of stuff in them. Here I've gone for seafood and I've also gone for an ensalada of langostinos which is like a large prawn. A bit of vegetable, a bit of salad, a bit of fish to finish off after some fairly greasy and heavy stuff at the last place. And I'm having an Alberino with these. Best white wine in Spain, always my go-to. And these little croquettes, best picked up with your hand and to be honest, best taken with an aperitif at the start of the meal or as a starter, but I like them at any time of the meal, but I would recommend you have them before your meal. And as I said, you can get anything in these from blue cheese to oxtail, to stew, to ham, to cod. And you could say salad is just salad, but you know, you get big prawns. You don't get maggots in Spain when you order a prawn salad. A mayonnaise dressing, slight hint of sweetness, but nothing compared to that Mary Rose garbage we get in the UK. Now, to finish with, the last thing is the Montadito de Cabrales, toasted bread with Asturian blue cheese. Again, not Sevillian, not Andalusian, but I love this cheese. And I've ordered a glass of Oloroso, a slightly sweet sherry, which I want to pair with it. I want to see how this goes, because usually I have cider with it in Asturias, and often these blue cheeses merit something a little sweeter, because Asturian cider is really dry. And if you look around, this is a cosy little place with a hole in the wall for kitchen, for service. And to go off at a tangent, I love the way these tables in Spain, they have somewhere to put your stuff underneath. It goes back to the days when people wore hats. For me, that is massively preferable to Pedro Jimenez. That was too sweet for me. Let's see if it matches well. Cabrales is such a heavy, heavy blue cheese, it dries up the saliva in your mouth, forcing you to take another drink. I think I prefer the Astorian cider, but this is not a bad thing to choose. If you can't get the cider, I think this Jerez Olorosa is a good choice. Cheers. Anyway, that's the last one for this afternoon. I'm going to watch the cricket this afternoon and I'll see you for some more tapas for dinner. Well, evening Matanistas, so I'm fully refreshed after a little siesta and a bit of cricket and I'm back at the crease again for the second inning. And we're going to start off this evening in a place called Casa Cuco. I've come here first because when the evening gets into full swing, it's very hard to get a seat. So a great way of starting the evening in Spain is to have a vermouth. It's not a drink I understand a lot about, but the lady at the bar said it was reasonably dry and recommended a splash of soda to liven it up. So here we are. And to go with it, I've gone for a little tapa of chicharron, which is pork skin or sometimes pork belly. It can be deep fried to look like sort of pork crackling or like a, a pork scratching. But this is an embutido, like a sausage made out of chicharron. And as always, the holy trinity of olive oil, paprika and salt. Here we are, another close-up. And I have to say, for the price of was it 180 or something or two euros a very very generous portion that is very nice though is i will be having this again for sure it is like a really nice piece of pork belly made into a sort of salami well the evening's got off to a great start i'll demolish this and we'll be on for the next tapper pretty soon and i think i'll be pretty exhausted by the end of the evening the way things are going so there we are folks the combination of the sour and slightly sweet vermouth with the fatty salty and peppery dressing on top of the pork which obviously is a bit fatty a great combination let's move on to the next place 
So, next stop, a place called El Mercader de Traona, the Merchant of Traona. And I'm going to take a slightly larger plate here because it's somewhere I passed today and couldn't get in and uh, I saw one item that has mutton written all over it. So this tapas bar actually doubles up as a wine shop. Now, I've asked for a glass of rosé, which is very slightly off dry, a little different to the one I had earlier, and I'm hoping I haven't carved with the dish that I'm having. I probably should have asked them. <laughs> I haven't realised that it's a wine shop as well, but, oh well, a bit of experimentation never hurts. And as you can see, this is a slightly darker coloured rosé than the one I had earlier. Well, Matanistas, my dish has arrived and it is love at first sight. Wow, wow, wow. You're going to see in a minute why I like this so much. I present to you prawn tartare in green tomato gazpacho. Wow, I can't wait to get stuck into this. This is cold soup and a raw seafood item. Two of my favourite things. So, without further ado, let's get stuck in. So, we'll start with a bit of the soup. Oh yeah, that is delectable. Wow, it uh, has that slightly tart flavour that only green tomatoes can give you. It's really got me my juices going. Now some of the prawns. Oh yes. Oh wow, I'm so glad I found this place. I think I've just gone to heaven, if ever a slurp was required. I think if I had this again, I'd have my go-to wine of an Albarino, but it's not a bad match. This soup is absolute business, as is the tartare. Juicy raw prawns come to mutton. Although, on second thoughts, having taken a mouthful with a bit more prawn in it, the rosé is growing on me as a match, so don't discount it. At the end of the day, as long as it's not outlandish, like a glass of whiskey or something, you can have what you want. So good it is that I'm going to finish it off before moving on to the next place. Well, I'm still in awe of what I've just had. I mean, the balance of sourness, acidity, the fruity flavours of the tomatoes, which were probably unripe green ones, which are better in savoury dishes sometimes, and the hints of citrus from the prawns. Wow, unbeatable. So many great flavours I enjoyed there. In fact, so many flavours I couldn't even pick them all out. But I did ask about the wine. He said, yeah, fresh rosé is good, but he said he had a slight preference for white with it. Never mind, I enjoyed it, and I'm sure you will if you try this place as well. Well, but where do we go from here? Because I doubt that dish is going to be surpassed tonight, but we still have at least three places to go. So seconds out, round seven. Okay, back down to earth now after that treat. And now I'm at a small place away from most of the places I've been eating at called La Taberna de Andres. I've never been here before, but it has good ratings and a good reputation. So let's give it a go. And they proudly announced that English is spoken here for those who struggle with Spanish. So I've gone for a lighter dish this time. I've not had that many tomatoes on this trip, less than I normally have, because I really like Spanish tomatoes, despite the debate I've been having on social media. Although I will happily try tomatoes from anywhere if you think they're better. Anyway, down to the dish. And we have a tomato salad dressed with olive oil, salt and a bit of sherry vinegar with a type of tuna. Now, this is a huge portion for very little money. I didn't think it would be this big. It's enough for two. I don't know if I'll eat it all. I might just have half of it because I have other places to go to. But it looks good. And the proof of the pudding here will most definitely be in the quality of the tomato. Nice tomatoes, nicely dressed. I mean, there's not much else to say about the dish. If the tomatoes are good, the dish is going to be good. The canned tuna will be what it is, but the tomatoes, delicious. And I've paired this with a verdejo, a different type of Spanish white wine. I normally go for Albarino, but I took the barman's advice and uh, paired it with this, and let's see how it goes. Yeah, not bad with the salty and vinegary flavours that you get from the salad dressing. Salt is regarded as important on all salad dressings in Spain. If you don't like salt, 
then I would advise you say something before you order these dishes. But I have to say, in weather as hot as this, you lose so much salt, I wouldn't worry about it. OK, folks, I'll see you soon for round eight. So, Matanistas, on to venue number eight on this epic tapas crawl. And we're now at the Taberna de Triana. I don't know much about this place. I read a bit about it. I haven't been there before. But often I make my judgments based on how I read the menu and how creative I think they are. And I've seen a little tapa that suits me just down to the ground. So, for round eight, I have got myself a glass of Moscatel from Valencia, a sweet white wine. It's not actually that sweet. And you could probably guess, given I rarely have this sort of thing, that I'm pairing it with blue cheese. And to be precise, deep fried mushrooms stuffed with blue cheese. Probably a little heavy on the cholesterol, but let's see how they taste. Mmm, they really did burst open. The sweet dip that comes with, in my opinion, is a little bit over the top. I guess that's because I've got a sweet wine. These are delicious. Nothing too complicated. No strange flavours for me to report. Just a nice, wholesome little tapper with a glass of wine. And, as you know, I like blue cheese, so that's why I stopped here. I can't comment about anything else here, but this I've enjoyed. So I'll polish this tiny plate full off, and we'll move on for round nine. And I'm so, stop number nine. Now, if you go across the Triana Bridge, turn right, walk along the street, you cannot miss this place. It's probably the biggest tapas bar in Triana, and it's one I've actually eaten at a lot. I like the stuff there. It's called the Casa Cuesta, so let's go in and see what's cooking. I've plumped for indoors, and if you want tapas here, you have to take them indoors. Outdoors, it's uh, plates, which I would have happily taken had I not had so much today. But you can guess what sort of food I'm having, because I've plumped for a glass of Calvert, Spanish sparkling wine, which is quite good. Not as good as champagne, but a hell of a lot better than most Proseccos, so cheers. And the interior of this bar is quite spectacular. Pictures of bullfighting, wooden panelled bar with a huge range of beverages. And you might not be able to see it from here. Bullfighting on the television for those who like that sort of thing. So, in the tapas section of the menu, they just so happen to have one of my favourite fishes, swordfish. Now, I had a choice of having it grilled or with lemon. I've had grilled swordfish a number of times, so I thought I'd go with lemon because I haven't had it like this before. And let us see how it tastes. Incidentally, these potatoes look delicious, but I'm not going to have them because I won't get to the next place if I have potatoes because I'm pretty full already. And a close-up, folks. Oh, yeah. Well, they know how to cook here. That is beautifully firm yet tender, cooked exactly to the right point. No overcooking here. And the lemon sauce is not sweet, so you can bet your bottom dollar in the UK that it would be sweet. But this is absolutely beautiful. Not as good as the tartare and gazpacho, but still, this has a wow factor to it. So I'm going to get on with this and enjoy it before we move on to the final round, round 10. So the 10th and final round Metanistas in this bar called Barabbas is actually just opposite where I live. So I can stagger back into my apartment. So that tells you how good a location my apartment is in. And this bar, well, it's obviously open at lunchtime, but stays open as late as possible, given the current regulations. And I have a nice selection of wines and tapas. We haven't had any red wine or meat yet, so uh, let's change that and have a bit of meat. So, it goes without saying, folks, that if I eat here a lot, the food is probably actually pretty good. And it's very creative as well, sort of creative modern tapas. So, no messing about, let's see what's on the table. 
Now I've had these a couple of times before, these artichokes with a very, very light mayonnaise and olive oil dressing. They're absolutely fantastic. And something I've had a lot in other places, but not here, is Chistora. And it's a Basque or Navarran sausage, slightly spicy. Sort of spicier version of chorizo, if you can look at it that way. And uh, my final pairing is a Rioja Reserva slips down very nicely but does it match the food? Quick close up and it's come in what I think is a mustard sauce. Mm. The mustard has a bit of kick to it but it's not a mad mustard. Having said that I'm perfectly capable of taking a strong mustard but I just love the way when you have to store it those meaty porky juices just come oozing out of the sausage. Well Matanistas, uh, the ending in Seville got a little bit messy. That Barbiana restaurant or tapas bar is really actually very good and I haven't done it justice in the video. Anyway that was a little bit heavy. I wouldn't recommend doing all of that in one day like I did but for any of you who want to do try doing so or just try a few of the tapas bars I went to I'll leave links in the description box where they do exist and the establishment has a web page so I'm going to sign off here plenty of content coming more from Seville bye for now and don't forget you can't beat a bit of mutton